presented by Data E. Welcome to part six of the Minnesota Fats Pool Legend Commentary, and I just noticed one thing. Has anybody noticed that the Sega logo appears to have a few pixels messed up on the E? Yeah, if you pay very close attention to the E, um, the biggest issue that you'll see is that there's a little bit on, like, in the middle of the E, like the second line, the second leg, so to speak, where it just looks as if, like, there's a little, um, it's like there's a little white dot just sticking out in an area that's not supposed to be sticking out. It's like somebody glitched up the logo. But, enough of that. Time for rotation. And fortunately, rotation is significantly faster. I think in this, all you need is w to win one round. And if not, you need to win two. But look, here's the way that it works. At least in the Saturn version. You have to reach a specific amount of points, whether it's 30, 60, or 120. In tournament mode, I think you, all you need is 60. But I think you need 120 in the Saturn version. I'll have to double check. But yeah, the first person to get that amount of points wins. You get points based on the number that you pocket. So like if I pocket one point if I pocket the one ball, I get a I only get one point. If I pocket the two ball, I get two, as I had done, and so on and so forth. So yeah, if, and if you ch and if you chain balls, like for example, if I pocket the eight, the twelve, and the fourteen there, that's twenty that's thirty-four points combined with all three balls. And so on and so forth. You know, it, again, it's, it's very easy to really rack up points in this if you're really good at um, chaining balls and pocketing them in quick succession. And also, another fortunate thing is, again, just like every other game, every time you pocket a ball, it's still your turn. You can literally sweep the board with somebody, and it doesn't take that much to do so. Might take a bit to figure out at first, but you know, once you get the hang of it, it's pretty quick. See, I just pocketed the 15, uh, my point total's now 17. And it can only get better from there. So let's see where I go from here. Um, nope. That was a safety. <laughs> but yeah, Rotation is a very fast game. It's not as painstakingly long as it took for me to complete this as how Single Pocket was. Single Pocket's a disaster. Can I just say that right now? I mean, that was just horrible. Never again, okay? <laughs> Never again. I, know, I don't ever want to have to torture any of us through that. That was just too much for comfort. And if you watched Part 5A, 5B, and 5C, uh, may fate have mercy on your soul, because <laughs> that was that just took too long. That took too long. And bear in mind, it took me four hours to record the single pocket portion alone. That's with save states. Ye now you understand how brutal it was for me. That was... That was no easy task. Again, there's a reason why this took over 11 hours to do. Why this game alone took over 11 hours to do, and the Saturn version has taken me, um, it, it took me over 11 hours to do its save states, at least when I did the first time I had to do the, um, the recording, but when I found out, let me explain how the Saturn version's um, recording difficulty has been. The Saturn version's recording for Side Pocket 2 has an unfortunate issue, because Yabi's re-recording um, doesn't work in the way it's intended to, so I have to use um, BizHawk. But Bizha BizHawk has a very unstable version of Yabba Use 9.2 or 9.4, or is it 9.12? It's one of those. What basically happens is, depending on the game, it'll desync, and it'll desync badly. So this means that Side Pocket 2 on the Saturn had to be segmented, aka Sing, aka the story mode had to be a single segment. The tournament mode has a very horrible um, desyncing issue, and it's because of the way that um, the game handles the random number generator, how it handles RNG. Every single individual round in a tournament mode, so like like round one of um, of tournament mode for eight ball would have to be its own part. Then round two in eight ball would have to be its own part. Round three and then round four. 
unfortunately, I don't have to worry about that once we get to the um, to the free play mode. I mean, free play mode. Once we get to the trial mode, where we can basically sell any um, any regular pool game, we won't have to worry about that in trick shot mode. But I'll take. But I'm not going to take my chances, so I'm only so I'm going to do that segmented. And once we get to the challenge fats mode, that will also have to be segmented because of that same issue. Not because I not because I don't think it is um, functioning oddly or just downright horribly. It's just the easier way to keep proper control of the game as I am recording it so that I don't feel like I'm losing any footage along the way. I mean, it's fairly decent though. It's nothing too gained or nothing too much lost. I mean, at least, at least I still keep everything intact even though it's just taken too long for comfort. I mean, standalone, the Genesis version took 10, 11 hours to record. Saturn version took roughly about about the same amount of time across four days. But now that I have to re-record the Saturn version in this method, I'm taking my time. But over over the entire um, amount of segments that I do, it's probably going to still be about 11 to 15 hours that it takes for me to fully record the Saturn version, input for input, frame for frame. And bear in mind, I'm trying to do it in a more time-compressing form as opposed to how I did it here in the Genesis version. And yet, I still somehow find a way to break the five-hour cap on the Saturn version. <laughs> and that's with cutscenes, mind you. The only reason why it's taking so long is because of the added cutscenes. If the cutscenes didn't exist, then that probably wouldn't have been a problem in the first place. But, you know me, I'm a completionist. I want to try to get this game as filled to the maximum as possible. It's not hard when you know what you're doing. It's just hard when the resources that you're using don't know what they're doing. <laughs> but don't worry, I know BizHawk will only get better over time. So wishfully I won't have to suffer with this, you know, once I get around to other titles, such as Rockman 8 Metal Heroes, once I get to the Saturn Sonic games, once I get to, I'd say virtually everything Saturn that there has to be out of the 1100 plus game directory. I still can't believe that the Saturn has over 1100 games, and yet there's still games that have not been archived yet. That's just weird. It's weird. It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't feel right. Okay, so rotation does force you to have to do three sets, okay. Uh, uh, but that's not a problem. A again, when compared to single pocket, um, I'd say that rotation takes about the same length as 8-ball. So, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with that at all. Now, you saw how there was a bit of lag when the ball was going back, even if it didn't show any lag frames. That is actually normal. Um, what is basically happening there is that, I guess the, um... I'm assuming that the Genesis VDP, uh, the graphics processor, is not able to, um, recognize that all those balls were moving uh, all at the same time, and it just went too slow for comfort. Especially when you saw, um, th those first two balls try to go for the pockets. The Saturn version fixes that because of its much stronger hardware. It has a better it has a better graphics engine and a better and just better processing core altogether. That you have you have a more bearable experience trying to run um, the Saturn version, doing stuff such as that as opposed to the Genesis version, which, in some regards, I guess is okay to an extent. But I don't know. May maybe someday, eventually, we'll see a lagless version of this game on the Genesis, and if not, then it'll probably be done via the PC. Again, one of these days, I would just like to get a whole bunch of series from a whole bunch of different gaming companies that either don't exist or have been discontinued, and just, I don't know, like, revive the old games. Like, um, I already said I wanted to do that with Mojo, make an optimized version of Mojo in HD, with, um, well, I, I mean, not in HD, but in, a, in high resolution, in high frame rate, um, with a more optimized um, multiplayer mode, with online mode capabilities, um, 
with a stage creator that allows you to access um, the the stage sevens in worlds two, five, and eight, world three, six, and nine. Um, I don't know, like, you also have versus battles where you can actually do at, um, stage 12 in the regular games for each world, uh, where you can have, like, a more optimized version of golf mode, because duck the physics in golf mode. Um, I also feel that, you know, you know, maybe one day if I had the money, I could probably, you know, purchase the rights to the entire Side Pocket franchise, make a complete port of the original um, Side Pocket titles uh, 1, 2, and 3, and re-release them in wide, yeah, re-release them with the widescreen treatment. Make remastered soundtracks. Give you soundtracks from all the other ports, including the arcade version, um, the Game Boy version, the NES, Genesis, Super Famicom, Saturn, PSX, you name it. And who knows? Maybe even make a side pocket four. <laughs> uh, you know, it's stuff such as that that I would gladly do. I would, I would gladly want to bring these series back because, you know, there comes a point where old franchises have to come back and in a really good form. To my knowledge, um, I forget the name of the group that um, that currently owns um, most of Data East's, yeah, most of Data East's um, franchises right now. I think it's either like Majestic or Marvelous Entertainment or something around that. Some, some name starting with an M, I think. And they haven't done anything with it. To my knowledge, all that they've done is like make a port, um, like just port the Japanese version of Side Pocket 3, uh, the Japanese PSX version of Side Pocket 3, mind you, to, um, to PlayStation Network. But it's only available in Japan, it doesn't have an English patch. So what I would also do is, if I got the ownership rights to the entire Side Pocket franchise, if I bought it off of them, I would also go out of our way to have my own translators make an English translation of Side Pocket 3 and release it here in the States. I would, I would love to see that. You know, we need to have an international release of Side Pocket 3. It, it, it suffers from Mother 3 Syndrome, where that also... Ha where, well, in the case of that game, it got an English translation by fans, but it's never gotten an official release by Nintendo. So that's gotta, that's gotta change eventually. But you can see where this is going. You can see where this is going. I want to take a whole bunch of old franchises and just bring them back from the dead. Just give them new works. Give them new, f give them new life. Heck, Super Game House Solitaire... Uh, yeah, Super Game House Solitaire. I can only play the third volume of it um, on my Windows 10 comp on, on the Lenovo H5050 because it's only compatible with Windows XP. Um, I mean, no, no, sorry. Volume 3 of Super Game House Solitaire is the only version that works on Windows 10. Volumes 1 and 2 don't. Nobody's made a patch for them. So, how am I going to make up for that? Well, uh... <laughs> Well, I do intend on making my... Uh, I have been intending on making my own card game, competitive card game franchise for a long time. And you might have even heard of it. It's called Master Deck. Basically involves me, Doug, Luna, and a whole bunch of other people just going to Vegas um, just, to play, just to play some lovely um, games at a casino, win big, but the casino gets robbed. So what ends up in the storyline is... It's up to me, Doug, Luna, and anybody else that we meet along the way to duke it out with a whole bunch of people, get back the casino's money, and then some. <laughs> and so on and so forth, through means of poker games. Master Deck 3 in that franchise, as well as maybe even if there will be a part 7, because I do intend to make 10 parts of this series. But Master Deck 3 is primarily going to be focused on Solitaire. It'll have its fair share of poker, but Solitaire will be its main um, focus. <laughs> yeah, have you ever seen competitive Solitaire in a video game before? I haven't seen it, so I'd like to be the first to do that. And with 12-player compatibility. Could you imagine? Ah, 12-player gaming. Who would have thought? That's something that definitely needs to happen eventually, though. How many times do I have to say that I love this music? <laughs> Again, I, d I can't get enough of this soundtrack. 
The OST for the soundtrack has got to be debatably one of the best works to have come out of Data East in the mid-90s, or just in the 90s in general. Um, I do, however, feel that the original soundtrack uh, for the Super Famicom side pocket, which I feel bad that I didn't record, um, that version definitely does have a lovely soundtrack, too. It's a completely different soundtrack from the Genesis version. And I hope that if you haven't given it a listen to yet, that you will. It sounds as if it's a combination of stuff from, like, Casio keyboards, from Roland, from the Yamaha DX7, the YM21280, and the YM21290, I think, as well, in terms of its, um... What is the YM21290? Is that, like, its uh, processing unit or something? I, I always forgot what it was. But either way, the music sounded definitely a bit more lively than what you get here in the Genesis version, which, don't get me wrong, again, the Genesis version is extremely good. The only downside was that it just didn't have, um, it, well, at least for the first side pocket title, it just didn't have the exact feel that we were all looking for, even though the soundtrack is good, it's lovely. There's even a remastered version of that soundtrack in particular on the Saturn version of Side Pocket 2. I don't know if it's available in the US version, but in the Japanese version, if you access the, um, the main user interface and then play the music um, via that, or if you just put it in a random CD player, you would get remastered tracks of the first um, side pocket title for the Genesis, which was rather nice, provided the fact that this game was originally made by the US team and re-released in Japan. So, yeah. But then again, did we ever get the original, um, did, did we ever get the 1992 version of Side Pocket in Japan? Yes, we did. Yes, I remember now. Yeah, there was, a, I remember seeing a Jap Mega Drive cover for on Sega Retro. So, yep. <laughs> I wouldn't forget something like that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't forget something like that. My memory's better than I think it is. Oh, hi, Jack Abbott. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't get enough of saying that. I can't get enough of saying that. Speaking of Jack Abbott, there's also um, there's also a completely um, unrelated comic book series that, or at least comic strip series that is made by um, good guy Colin R. Skosik. I think I'm getting that name right. It's Colin R. Skosik, right? It's not a different initial. He makes a he makes a daily series. Um, he has um, a series of Jack Abbott that goes on um, six days a week from Monday to Saturday. Then he has a Sunday edition involving um, Jack Abbott's Sunday edition and George Preston, which is another character in his franchise. Simply put, Jack Abbott is a really lovely science fiction style um, comic series. It, it doesn't have. Um, it's not all too, well, so to speak, detailed for modern cartoon standards, but it kind of has that 70s, 80s feel that I always enjoy in comic books and comic strips that I feel that it is definitely a series worth investing in. I think the series began in 2012, and it's been going on ever since. So, in the event that you ever have the time, just go to Jack Dosh, I mean, I mean no, Jack Dash Abbott. Yeah, uh, uh, Jack Dash Symbol Abbott .deviantart .com and you'll gladly be able to take a look at his series from front to back. Really great work. I recommend it. I would always recommend it. It's definitely something I have. I mean, I've invested a lot of time into it. Um, I've well, in the w reading it actually. I've even shared a good amount of his episodes uh, via my personal Facebook. So, yeah. Definitely giving Colin some good love, and definitely giving him some free promotion. Go, Colin. Oh. Oh, I think I know why I did this, because I wanted to see if Hinkle could get the ball out, because uh, this is not going to be an easy one. He, he'll have to hit the eight. And that's not what he's going to do. He's going to go for the... Oh, duck, I can't believe I... Oh, it's a scratch. Wait, how was that a scratch? Ugh. Careful. 
Oh, geez. Sometimes I, sometimes, again, I'm a very aggressive player when it comes to using follows, masses, and jumping. Sometimes I use too much follow whenever I play, and that's just because I'm too powerful with my shot. I mean, again, I'm I'm a very very harsh aggressor in pocket billiards. I'm not somebody that that plays the game regularly. Sometimes I shoot the ball too fast. Sometimes I shoot it too powerfully. I swear, one of these days I'm gonna accidentally break a ball in, a, in an official pool game broadcasted live. I swear that will happen. <laughs> That might actually go viral, because that's not something that happens often. If you ever have the ability to break balls like that in a pool game, you're a good shot. You've got very, you've got some spunk in you, you've got some power. Don't put it to waste. Let people know how powerful you are at the table. And it doesn't matter what game you're playing. Whether you're playing 8-ball, 9-ball, 10-ball, 7-ball, um, single pocket, rotation, 14.1 continuous slash straight pool, whether you're playing 3-ball, whether you're playing Cutthroat, which is my personal favorite, whether you're playing Boliards, which is Minnesota Fat's personal favorite, you're going to see that more in the Saturn version, um, whether, you, whether it's, um, you know, Mitsudama, Yotsudama, and Karam Billiards, fun never ends. The fun just doesn't end, it just keeps on going. It's like it's surging through your soul and you just can't get enough of it. But you have to play to some good music. You have to have the best kick anus music that there is out there. Do that and you'll never go wrong. Ah, my lovely upbeat carnival music. <laughs> can't get enough of that, just can't. Okay, I'm gonna pocket the two and the three, yep. And it uh, looks as if... Oh, wow, this is perfectly symmetrical. I like that. Yeah, if you know how to do straight shots, you can always do that properly. But um, most of the time, it's never gonna be symmetrical if you're playing in real time. If you're not doing a simulated game, Usually in real time, it's never symmetrical unless if you're really good. Hmm, speaking of which, um... There is a particular, um, game of pool that I've wanted to do for a long time, and that's Speedball. Now, what Speedball is, um, you know, you're given your basic set of 15, right? You're given your basic set of 15 balls. You can pocket them in any fashion you want. Your job is to pocket the balls as fast as you can, in the fastest time that you can. Um, some tournament games have it be that you are penalized like 5 or 10 seconds if you scratch the cue ball. But that's, but that's something totally different. But yeah, Speedball is definitely a game I've wanted to do for a while, but I just haven't found anybody who can really clear the board quickly. I don't know anybody who can clear the table as fast as I have been able to in recent time, and it's just not, it's just not my cup of tea. Just yet. At least until somebody can, at least until we can find somebody that's able to do get out with me very well, but We'll see where that goes. We'll see where that goes. But then, of course, there's a certain game that I'm surprised is never often talked about here, but it's often played elsewhere in the nation. I mean, elsewhere in the nation. Elsewhere internationally. Maybe in California, if, if I'm lucky enough to find it. Uh, Snooker. Snooker is a game that's slowly going back into, um, into popularity. Basically, you have... Um, you have 15 red balls, and in those, and in that, you basically have to um, pocket red balls using your cue ball once you gain points. And then once those are gone, you can then get rid of the other colored balls, which each give you between like two and seven points each, or something around that. First person to a certain um, score value ends up winning the game altogether. Lately, um, six red snooker is actually the um, common. Um, game that is available, but, um, 
I don't know, Sex Red Snooker is decent and all, but it, it, it needs something more than what we're already getting. Oh, by the way, we're at the end of tournament mode. Yeah, we just, uh, we just beat Henkel for the rotation trophy. Now we are the undisputed champion of Minnesota Fats Pool Legend. This is where I can say at this point that I have officially become Minute Roya Fats. The legendary pool master guaranteed to tuck up your game in less than a minute. Yes! I love that trophy. That track! I've heard that track before, but it wasn't in this game, it was in some other game or a TV show. Hmm. Oh wait, Fantasy Star! Right! That track is based on um, Parma's adventure field in um, in the first 1987 Fantasy Star. Oh my goodness, that game turns 30 years old next year. Oh, that's... Wow. You know I'm old. <laughs> I actually never got to play Fantasy Star until 2009, oddly enough. Yeah, I didn't get to play Fantasy Star until 2009 and... I'm quite surprised it took me so long to actually get a hold of it. It's a pretty good, it's a pretty good title. Um, but um, you know, even though I've been playing it for the past seven years, I've never actually beaten it. I've only beaten, um, I've only beaten two and four. Three is just too long for comfort because there are um, what is it, eight different endings? It's either eight or four. No, it's it, it yeah, it's something around that. But yeah. That is the end of another portion of Minnesota Fast Pool Legend. That is the end of the tournament mode. Now it's time for some extra games, and you'll be seeing that next.